from New York, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome to The World Over tonight from New York City. A little later, we have our exclusive interview with Archbishop Timothy Dolan. We're talking about some contemporary issues as well as his new elevation to the College of Cardinals. Also joining us will be Jenny Stepanek, um, the mother of Maddie Stepanek, the poet and peacemaker. But first, on January 6th, he got an amazing announcement. He would be made a Cardinal of the Catholic Church. I'm speaking of Archbishop Timothy Dolan, who after three years of being Archbishop of this city, will soon be elevated to this elite club of cardinals. We recently sat down with him to discuss the appointment as well as some issues he's grappling with. Take a look. How do you interpret this epiphany gift the Holy Father gave you <laughs> by naming you a cardinal ahead of your predecessor's 80th birthday, which is unheard of? It was on the epiphany. You're right, yes, Raymond, on the 12th day of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not here in the United States. But when I greeted my staff here at the Cardinal Cook Center, I said, on the 12th day of Christmas, my <laughs> pontiff gave to me. But I said, it sure beats a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, I'll agree. <laughs> Get named a cardinal. I don't know. I, I mean it, Raymond. I'm not, you know me well that I'm not trying to uh, uh, be a fake here. This isn't a tribute to the entire Archdiocese of New York. I mean, anybody who is named Archbishop of New York, odds are. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have to be Jimmy the Greek to, to, to put pretty he heavy bets that that man is going to become a cardinal. And that's ju it's just a real title. I said to the folks on Friday morning, on January 6th, interpret this as the Pope putting the red hat on top of the Empire State Building or the Statue of Liberty or at home plate on Yankee Stadium. What he's saying to the Catholics and to the greater community of New York, I love you. I need you. I want to affirm uh, your leadership in the church today. Okay. That's what this is about. Archbishop Tim, I read that quote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Father did it in advance. They usually wait till the predecessor is 80 because that man will be able to vote in a conclave. You're right. Uh, now, the, your, your predecessor, Cardinal Egan, isn't 80 until April. The April Holy 2nd. Father is making an exception here. Oh, you you I even knew, knew the that. date. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. You've got little X's on the calendar, little red X's. You, so, you, I mean, the fact he that he did this exception. ahead of time says something about his confidence in you, yes? Well, thank you. Thank you. I hope so. I mean, my, I would... My, uh, my loyalty to the Holy Father. I've been raised that way, that, mm -hmm. that, when, uh, that he's the vicar of Christ, he's the pastor of the Church Universal. And one of the ways I interpret being named a cardinal is an invitation to serve him and the Church Universal in a more expansive, more generous mm -hmm. way. So thank you for, for pointing that out. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, there was a lot of excitement, let me tell you. When yeah. this was announced, my email box suddenly wow, was flooded good. with a Twitter account. When are good. you going to interview him? You should have you, him on you, this week. You bring something, you, you, bring, you, you are right. I, people always say, are you surprised you were named a cardinal? I thought, look, i got to be honest. When I got to New York, I knew sooner or later yeah. I'd be a cardinal. Honestly, I thought it'd be later for the right. very reason you gave. The Pope's pretty strict. He's a good German. Yep. The rules are rules. <laughs> uh, and there's other dioceses that would be in the same predicament, right. like Westminster, Correct. Manila, huge mm -hmm. dioceses, important dioceses. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and so I didn't think there. Yeah. When I heard the strong rumors there was going to be a consistory announced on January 6th, I thought, well, patience, Dolan. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get it this time. So I was surprised when I now, got it. Now, aside from getting a permanent seat at Scarpone, uh, <laughs> which this I is, had already. Which I knew you already had. I saw the plaque when I was last and there. And the napkin ring. Yeah, at the, right, right, right there near the, near the Vatican. Uh, you will be in Rome a lot more now. You're head of the bishops' conference mm -hmm. and head of this enormous diocese. How will you balance your time? Because I imagine you'll be on a number of these congregations in Rome. Yeah, that is. People have been asking, Raymond, what, what, what would be your additional responsibilities now as a member of the college? of Cardinals, and, and you pegged it, a cardinal is traditionally asked to serve on two or three congregations, mm -hmm. which our listeners know what those are. Sure. Almost they'd be the Rome's equivalent of the cabinet posts right. in, our, in the American government. hope they work a little better than ours yeah. do. But, uh, but, <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> they're obviously more on our side, but never mind. That's another question. But, uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, but, uh, so you would, because in the, in, the, in the structure of the Holy See, the central government of the church, the, a congregation is run by a, almost like a board of mm -hmm. cardinals. Mm -hmm. So you'd be appointed to those. So, and you'd be expected to take that seriously. So once or twice a year, so depending on how many I'm, I'm on, you're right, that could get yeah. another four or five times to Rome. Now, you just got back from Rome. You had your Ad Limina visit had there the Limina, not long ago. And even before that, I was there at the end of October as uh, with the leadership of the United States Conference mm -hmm. of Catholic Bishops. We traditionally, the president and vice president, so Archbishop Joe Kurtz and me and Monsignor Ronnie Jenkins and, and Father Brian Bransfield, we went the end of October and then your 
you're right. At Thanksgiving, I was there for the Ad Limina, which mm -hmm. is going on now. Yeah, and that's kind of your annual, what, five, every, every five, five years, years yeah. you're meeting face to face with yeah. the Holy Father. What, in your mind, is the most important issue to the Holy Father regarding the United States at this moment? Is it marriage and family? Is it religious freedom? Uh, he mentioned uh, evangelization to lapsed Catholics. Mm -hmm. What, do you, what stands out in your mind? You know mind? What, what stands out in my mind, Raymond, and I think my auxiliary bishops would back me up, because myself and my four auxiliaries, we sat with the Pope for 37 minutes. Not that we were timing it, but when we left, they said, you had 37 minutes. The most important issue to him was to listen to us, tell us, tell him what our most important issues are. Mm -hmm. He's a great teacher. A teacher always listens. A teacher always gauges his students. Mm -hmm. And he let us do most of the talking. Now, from his, from his questions... I would say what he was most issue, what he was most interested in would be that wide area of the new evangelization. Mm -hmm. So he's asking us about religious practice. He asked us about our beloved Latinos. Mm -hmm. He asked us about all the immigrants. He asked us about fallen aways. He asked us about young people. In other words, those that would be traditionally challenged to drift from the faith, he was interested in bringing them home mm -hmm. into the embrace of Holy Mother Church. In his address to us, and these are these are very important, you know, when a pope addresses the ad limina. Sure, sure. And he's only going to do what? He's only going to do that five or six times right. this year. So those talks are biggies. There what was important was what? Religious liberty, mm -hmm. marriage and family, Catholic schools, vocations. Those are the four issues he mentioned to us. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your homily, which is getting international headlines now that you're moving into the College uh -huh. of Cardinals. Uh, I saw it in the Times of London. They carried an excerpt of your homily from this past Sunday. Did they really? Which touched wow. on, and you said, that sexual morality is tied to so many of our social ills. How so? Well, How do you I, see that following through? This, uh, I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me, Raymond. I, I had a, uh, I, I think like any good, uh, like any priest who takes mm -hmm. preaching seriously, I start preparing a week before. Mm -hmm. And when I went over the three readings, the middle one from St. Paul was on sexual morality. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind telling you my immediate temptation was, well, I'll skip that one. That's mm -hmm. hot button. That's a little too delicate. I'll go with the first and third. My conscience nagged me. And I kept saying to myself, Dolan, when was the last time you gave a positive, compelling sermon on chastity? Mm -hmm. And this is the time to do it and set a good example. Mm -hmm. And my point was, even though the church is caricatured as having this oppressive, backward, antiquated, out of touch teaching on, on, uh, on sexual morality, as a matter of fact, ours is the most liberating, healthy, happy teaching there is. Mm -hmm. And we need to preach it more than ever. And if you want to see the results and fruits of sexual immorality, all you got to do is look around. Family breakdown, uh, disease, violence, addiction, pornography, human trafficking, mm -hmm. prostitution. Who, how, what, what more dramatic evidence do we need yeah. of, of the fact that when you listen to God and do it His way, you're going to have holiness, health, and happiness. If you disobey Him, you're going to be in trouble. Is this any more, anywhere more dramatic than in chastity? Mm -hmm. There were a couple of questions that our viewers wrote in and said, please ask Archbishop sure. Dolan this question. Sure. And they I'm repeatedly... I'm not giving the sass size for the I'm not asking that. I'm not asking that. Though I do want to see the socks before we're done. That's the four done, secret okay? of Fatima. Okay, we won't do that. that. <laughs> they were asking about, there was a special, Lady Gaga did a special at the Convent of the Sacred Heart here in town. Uh -huh. It was a Thanksgiving special. And some people took umbrage with some of the songs. She was teaching the kids and they were around singing. Um, the headmaster there claims you approved that display and, I didn't. and Lady Gaga doing that. Is, is that your reading of this? I mean, I, I hate to call her integrity yeah. into question. I cannot recall approving that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't even know that it happened until mm -hmm. you were kind enough to bring it to my yeah. attention. Now, mm -hmm. I would find that very distasteful. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know me, I'm a pretty yeah, yeah. wide open guy. But when somebody has, uh, has uh, made it known that she is completely at odds with the teaching of the church, um, that's not good. That's mm -hmm. not a good example for our kids. But that's run by a. That's not a diocesan uh, institution. That's it's not run a, by one of our diocesan by schools. Order, but right? I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. Let's talk for a moment about this gay marriage issue. I know you uh, were you yeah. were right in the middle of this, and again, you weren't against anybody. You were trying to make the the argument for marriage. Um, some are asking. Andrew Cuomo has been so determined to move this agenda forward. He signed the law. Mm -hmm. He's a Catholic. Are you engaging him at all? And people are saying, why not 
deny a politician like that in yeah, the union? Uh, the, que the first question you ask is the most important one. Are we engaging them? And we are. I speak mm -hmm. we as corporately as the bishops, but personally I am too. Mm -hmm. we don't, but we try our best to be good pastors and try. And so I don't pass up the opportunity to speak to him about mm -hmm. that, about his own, his own position on this, about some of the own, his own personal issues. I don't pass that up. I do have to make, I do have to make though, um, Raymond, uh, a, a prudential judgment as what is the most effective way. I mean, we Catholic leaders are pretty pragmatic. I mm -hmm. think we have to say, how can we best further the teaching of Jesus, his gospel and his, and his church? Uh, uh, what's the most effective way? And I think there's a lot of latitude there. I, right now, have chosen, I don't know if it would be that effective to come down with a sledgehammer. I think it might be more effective to gradually, patiently, persistently bring home to him the truth of the church that he professes. Mm -hmm. And that, and I'm, I'm not going to give up on that. Okay. Final question. Sure. I hear you have undertaken a new diet and exercise regimen. You've shed 25 pounds. You look great. I'm down to three chins. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, progress. Progress. <laughs> Is this true? You've undertaken this new well, regimen? Well, I have to. You know what happened? The knee went out. Oh. And the knee, uh, so that I couldn't even genuflect. And so, oh. of course, I went to my physician because mm -hmm. I thought now, and he said, well, no wonder it went out. It's protesting. How would oh. you be complaining if you had to carry this around? Mm. So he said, I'm going to give you some, uh, I'm going to give you a couple shots. Yeah. But he said, I'm going to give you some uh, rehab to do, and I want you to lose weight. So it was oh. kind of a question. You know, when you get, w w when it starts uh, having an effect on the way you live, when you mm -hmm. can't even genuflect, which is an act yeah. of prayer and reverence for me, sure. that goes, that hits home. Mm -hmm. And I said, if, if I need to lose some weight, thanks for noticing, I've, oh boy, do I have a long way to go. And I, I was pretty successful, kind of fell off the wagon right before Thanksgiving, and I'm still trying to recuperate. But thanks for noticing, yeah. I, I got some more to go. Okay, well. And I, 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 I try, know Raymond, to give it a, a spiritual tenor. You know, this is, this is uh, asceticism. This is penance. This is mortification. <laughs> it ties into our spiritual life. Well, now, show me the socks before I go. Oh, My kids will these? want to see the socks. Not those. <laughs> I just the other got ones. them. Now, just, these somebody came just the gave these to me. Oh, how well, funny. Well, is that something? Now, these, I am told, these are the Cardinal now, Red Sox. I'm told I... I'm not about to. Are you going to wear them every day? I'm a Yankee fan, not a Red Sox fan. Okay, <laughs> let's be very clear about that. Sean O'Malley can wear these, okay. the Cardinal Archbishop of Boston, but not Timothy Dolan. Okay. But I think we do have to wear them on the when day you're, itself. That's right. Okay, that's so right. I want your cameras to zoom right in on okay. that day. Okay, we will do that. Congratulations, your <laughs> Thank M. Thank you, Raymond. I'm going to call you M you because you're you not can, Eminence How about M&M? Yeah, not yet. No, no, no. We won't the do peanut that. ones, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be bringing you live coverage of that consistory February 18th and 19th. You'll be able to watch Archbishop Dolan, soon to be Cardinal Dolan, as well as Archbishop Edwin O'Brien receive their red hats. It'll be quite a day. Coming up, Jenny Stepanek, the mother of Maddie Stepanek, the poet and peacemaker, on the importance of every human life and its value when the world over life continues. three life philosophies every day. One is my life philosophy, to remember to play after every storm. Every life storm in our lives is like a challenge on this road, but with the MDA bulldozer and torch running, I'll just plow right over that. The second one is, to re is my mom's life philosophy, to celebrate life every day in some way. And not only while we are plowing over those challenges with our torches, we'll wave those torches around, sing some songs, celebrate life while we are beating the odds. And finally, my hero, Jimmy Carter's life philosophy. If you want something bad enough, never give up trying for it and you will succeed. Welcome back to The World Over Live. One of our viewer favorites is Jenny Stepanek. She is the mother of Maddie Stepanek, the poet and peacemaker who left us all too early. She, like her son, battles a rare form of muscular dystrophy. But her message and her witness stands on its own and I think touches so many. Here's an encore of one of our favorite interviews. Take a look. So good to have you back. 
And uh, I get, you don't know the number of emails I get about this book and about your appearances on this show. I was at a barbecue recently, and these are people I've known for years. Uh, and the, and the, the mother came over to me, and this is not somebody who is easily taken in, and she's certainly not impressed by media types. And she walked over and she said, you know, I rarely watch your show, said, to which I said, gee, thanks. <laughs> and she said, I saw your interviews with that Jenny Stepanek. This woman is the real deal. And I think the message and your inherent faith and, and buoyancy, vision, peace, I think it communicates in all these interviews. I mean, uh, and I want to go back. I want to set the stage for those who might not be familiar with your okay. story. You had four children yes. who ultimately succumbed to this terrible, very rare form of muscular dystrophy. Here's the first question. Do you ever get over that grief? Do, how do you cope with that kind of grief every day? Um, simple answer, no, you never get over the grief. Mm -hmm. But I, I do want to mention, I had four children before I was diagnosed. Uh -huh. So four kids, four and a half years, not knowing I was passing this on to my mm -hmm. children. They didn't know what it was when, they the, didn't when the know. first I mean, babies. It was clear something was mm -hmm. wrong. It was unclear what was wrong. And the first two died very quickly. By the second, by the third and fourth, I realized this is going to happen, so I, I stopped conceiving children. But when you lose a child, that's forever. Um, you never get over the grief. Mm -hmm. Can you start celebrating life again? Yes. Mm -hmm. right, the grief remains. Yeah. I, saw, I read a quote from you, uh, and, and it said, I've been as far into the abyss as it is possible to go. How did you come out of that abyss? I think God gave me a rope. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. um, it means when you've got nothing else, you're open to God. Mm -hmm. And God worked through other people. Um, I mean, there were times that I questioned. Uh, Maddie challenged me to choose to breathe, you know, mm -hmm. choose to inhale. Don't just breathe automatically. Don't just breathe to exist. Uh -huh. And I hit a point where I could not come up with good enough reasons mm -hmm. to choose to inhale. What I love about every time I talk with you, every time, and, and reading this book, and I've read it several times now, um, you'd never collapse. There's no self-pity in the book. There's never self-pity when you talk about your situation. And look, you've got a lot more to complain about than the rest of us, certainly me. Oh, I complain. That's called misery, okay? Compl I can have miserable moments. Self-pity, though, saps you of all the energy. Mm -hmm to climb out of the abyss, to be yeah. open to God, to do something for somebody else. And that spirit, and I would argue, it comes from you. Maddie had that spirit, that same spirit. Mm -hmm. He was not, he was someone who was living with a disease that he knew would claim his life, mm -hmm. but never in any of the interviews, I'm going to show you a bite in a moment from him, there was never that sense of self-pity. This is a, a, an interview with Maddie, mm -hmm. and he talks about, um, he talks of the awareness of what's happening to him, mm -hmm. yet again, that sense of faith is so intact. Listen. I never question God. Sometimes I say, why me? Why have I had such a hard life? Why do I have this disease? Why do I have siblings who die? But then I think, and I say, why not me? Yeah. Why not me? Why not me? Yeah. Is, it does, do those words ever ring in your heart oh, and do. head as you were going through all of this suffering and continue to? Yeah, and I do question. and and. You know, I question, if not me, who would I wish this on or trade lives with? Mm -hmm. And there's nobody. Um, there's nobody I'd rather be than my children's mother. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, I have moments where it's miserable. This disease hurts me. I've buried all four of my children. Mm. Um, I will die sooner than I'd like to from this disease. Mm -hmm. But I celebrate life in every moment I can because why bother taking that next breath? Yeah. Th th those were one of his last words, his last phrase, do not breathe simply to exist. Tell people what that means to you. Well, I kept telling Maddie, you can't leave me, you can't leave me. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, how do you bury your fourth and final child? Mm -hmm. He was my best friend, my child, my playmate, mm -hmm. my prayer partner, my student, my teacher, my everything. Mm -hmm. And. I began realizing he's going to die whether I'm okay with it or not. I'm not mm -hmm. in charge of this decision. And so I talked to him and, and started saying, when is enough enough? And mm -hmm. I said, you know, 
life does go on. And he looked at me and he said, choose to inhale. Hmm. And I did just what you did. It's like, what? And he said, don't breathe, simply to exist. And I got it, that hmm. life is about this moment and how it leads to each next moment and the difference that we can make with any moment. It's the potential. And that's what God sees in us. Right. God doesn't look at us at our faults, at our sins, at our shortcomings and our weaknesses. He looks at our potential. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love that, Maddie. We'll show you a bite a, a little later about how aware he was of his calling. Tell me when that calling started and what that calling was. This child died, incidentally, at 13 years old. Yes. So, I mean, this wasn't a long life, no. but it was certainly a rich and full one. Oh, yes. Um, Maddie began saying when he was about three years old that God placed messages in his heart and that everybody has a reason for being, and his mm -hmm. reason is to shape the messages with his own words mm -hmm. and to offer that message to the world so everybody could hear and know what God wants them to hear and know. Well, you know, early on I thought these were the imaginary musings of a creative three-year-old, but as time continued passing, what he would say was so deep and so profound and wise, and it's nothing that I was saying to him, nothing that he was picking up. Parroting back, right. yeah. Um, and, and he just, he seemed to know God rather than learn about God. Hmm. Um, God was always his friend. Hmm. God walked with him. Um, and one of the most profound things he said to me that I, I think I might have mentioned in the book, as he got closer to death and he knew he was dying even before I could accept that, mm -hmm. he said, even the silence of God gives me strength. He knew God even when God didn't answer his prayers. He wanted to live longer. Even the silence of God gives me strength. Yes. Um, he was 13. It was mm. December of 2003, six months before he died. Mm. And so now when I'm giving God a to-do list in mm. my prayers, um, you know, even the silence of God can give me strength too um, mm. if I sit back and be open to that. Eternal roll call. I will paint rainbows when the spring comes and the children will dance and smile in the music of my colors. I will shape clouds when the summer comes and children will chant and dream in the melody of my creations. I will whistle winds when the fall comes and children will listen and hum in the understanding of leaves. I will jingle stars when the winter comes and the children will laugh and believe in the ballads of the season. I will revolve seasonally when my death comes and children will remember and share their heart songs, celebrating the gifts in the circle of life. In the book, you relate his final and last words, and there's a yes. succession of them. Yes. And uh, I, I gave a talk this summer. EWTN had a, a celebration yes. in Birmingham, and I, yeah. I quoted yes. from these last words because they, they've so profoundly had an impact on me. You have a 13-year-old boy asking the question, have I done enough? Will it last? Yes. What did you think when you heard this from your son, who had given everything, including his ah. body at the last breath, right. to getting this message out, this message of hope, this message yes. of peace? It breaks your heart because um, I'm watching. I mean, you're stuck with two things. I'm, I'm his mommy, mm -hmm. so I'm watching my child die. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that he had this passion for spreading a message of hope and peace. That was real. It was not a fad. It was not a hobby. It was his life's purpose. He believed that was his reason for being. So when he asks me, have I done enough? I just want to jump and say, of course you have. But you do wonder, you know, what is enough? Mm -hmm. Can any of us ever do enough? And so my response was, if you've done your best in as many moments as you can possibly do your best, you've done enough. It will last. And do you see your mission now as, have, as carrying on his words, carrying on his message? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, my message is very similar to his. You know, I have a message of personal peace, and his is personal to world peace. Mm -hmm. So I don't hang on his coattails and just spread his word. Mm -hmm. I spread it through my life, and that's what Maddie wants us each to do. He said, these are my words, but you shape these words with your life, with your mind, with your heart. You don't have to quote me. 
take the essence of the message and live that, be mm -hmm. that. And that's what I do. And a lot of it's anchored because I am his mom. I have the quotes, I have the material, I have the unpublished things. Um, but I don't always directly quote him. I shape it with my experiences. Mm -hmm. I have a song deep in my heart, and only I can hear it. If I close my eyes and sit very still, it is so easy to listen to my song. When my eyes are open and I am so busy and moving and busy, if I take time and listen very hard, I can still hear my heart song. It makes me feel happy, happier than ever, happier than everywhere and everything and everyone in the whole wide world. Happy like thinking about going to heaven when I die. My heart song sounds like this. I love you, I love you. How happy you can be. How happy you can make this whole world be. And sometimes it's other tunes and words too. But it always sings the same special feeling to me. It makes me think of Jamie and Katie and Stevie and other wonderful things. This is my special song. But do you know what? All people have a special song inside their hearts. Everyone in the whole wide world has a special heart song. If you believe in magical, musical hearts, and if you believe you can be happy, then you too will hear your song. Mm -hmm. Tell people, give people a sense into the window of his faith, which was so deep in so many ways. I mean, you have a child who's dying in ICU, mm -hmm. and you relate a story in the book. He hears a baby crying yes. in one of the adjoining rooms. Tell people what he says. It's within a week of his death, um, and he starts <laughs> calling out, nurse, nurse, and his nurse came running in the room. What is it? What is it? Because this is a child that could not speak above a whisper because he was gasping for breath. And when she came in ready to console him, meet his dying needs, he said, comfort the baby. The baby's crying. The baby is the future. Love yeah. the baby, because that's how life goes on. And the nurse just started crying, and she went over, and she picked up the baby and said, look, Maddie, look, I'm loving the future. I'm holding the future for you. And that's, his body was broken, broken, bones broken, gasping, and he still was concerned about others. Mm -hmm. He was concerned about telling me not to lie down in the ashes of his life. Mm. We'll go to the phones. Mara from Illinois. Go ahead. You have a question for Jenny. Yes. Good evening, Raymond, and thank you very much for this wonderful show. I'm delighted. Um, because because um, Maddie was so um, strongly um, um, close to God and faithful, did he openly aspire to become a saint, and was that important to him? Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> okay. When Maddie was three, and, you know, I don't tell this to many people, and here I am yeah, on an international it to show. <laughs> Um, Maddie said, oh, I'll be one of God's saints. And, you know, he's three years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't, don't say that. It, you, you're more humble than that. No, don't ever say that again. <laughs> but he said, we're all saints. If we just do God's will, if we just mm -hmm. live as according to God's plan for us. Um, did Maddie live to be a saint? No. Maddie thought bathroom humor was funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but he lived to reflect God in his life. Mm -hmm. And um, he lived to help other people live their best life also. Mm -hmm. So, yes. And he also, I, I don't, we have some footage of him at uh, taking communion with the, uh, getting mm -hmm. the ashes uh, uh, mm -hmm. placed on his head. Teaching catechism, how yes. did this come about? He was what, 11 years old, 12 years old? He began when he was nine or 10 years old teaching catechism. How did this happen though, Jenny? Ten year, <laughs> nine year olds don't teach catechism. Nine year old are, nine year olds are taught catechism. Yes, and he taught it well. Um, he made his first communion, and a week later, Cardinal Hickey mm -hmm. was at our church to make uh, in, in, the confirmation sacrament. Mm -hmm. And he was asking the confirmande all these questions, and little eight-year-old, seven-year-old, seven-year-old Maddie's hand is shooting up in the air again and again. He so wanted to answer the questions. Well, I knew he couldn't possibly know the answers because he's seven, so mm -hmm. Cardinal Hickey talked to him afterwards realized he not only knew the answers, he understood the answers, that this was Maddie's life. And he wanted to confirm him right then. I asked that Maddie study for a year to fully understand 
the depth, that this was not simply, I know answers. Mm -hmm. I'm making a choice. I am embracing Catholicism. Um, and when Cardinal Hickey came back, Maddie was confirmed at the age of eight. Mm -hmm. And then Maddie went to our pastor, Father Dixon, and said, now what can I do to share what I, what's inside of me? I'd like to help teach. And he began with second grade. Mm -hmm. And by the time he was 11 and 12, he was teaching sixth grade. Kids mm -hmm. bigger than uh, him who absolutely hung on to his every word. Remarkable. Yeah. Remarkable. Let's go to the phones again. Kim from Florida. Go ahead, Kim. What's your question? Yes, I'm wondering what to do about the guilt that I feel because of being angry at God for the suffering in my own life. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm feeling very, very guilty that I have the to get angry at God about anything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's natural, though, to it have a little, natural. I mean, to, 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 yeah. want, to wonder, and then to f sort of look in and go, why me, mm -hmm. and anger. Uh, is, is that something you and, went through? And that's what I said is the difference between misery mm -hmm. and self-pity. And every moment is a new moment that we can begin to move past that. You know, it does not mm -hmm. matter what we did in the last moment. I mean, it does. Everything we yeah. do has an impact. But every moment is a chance to say, okay, despite that, I move forward and I move forward in faith and in strength. And what do I want? Let me give that to someone else. And of course I'm hurt. Why my children? Why all four of my children? Why was I affected so I couldn't even, I mean, I, I couldn't lift my, my children. I couldn't, mm. you know, I mean, I couldn't be the mommy that I wanted to be. And how do you get past that, Jenny? There's no one answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of it is faith, and a lot of it is you choose to focus. You don't ignore the burdens, mm -hmm. but you choose to put your sight over on some blessing, something that I can do. I can't walk. I can't pick up my children, but I can certainly listen to my children, mm -hmm. okay? I am not going to live as long as I want to live. What can I do right now, and how fully can I do it? And what do I miss about my children? How can I offer that to someone else? Because that must be something that mattered to me. So being grateful, gratitude. Being grateful. Absolutely, absolutely. What I was grateful for, what, what I think right now I'm missing, Maddie, I'm missing those conversations. I need to find somebody that needs a conversation. I mean, hmm. offer to somebody what you're aching for and give that to someone. That's oh, beautiful. Our eyes are for looking at things, but they're also for crying. And we are very happy or very sad. Our ears are for listening, but so are our hearts. Our noses are for smelling food, but also the wind and the grass. And if we try very hard, butterflies. Our hands are for feeling, but also for hugging and touching so gently. Our mouths and tongues are for tasting, but also for saying words like, I love you, and thank you, God, for all these things. Uh, Jenny, we have gotten tons of emails. I want to share some of these with you. Um, Joseph Mar Martone asks, in all the love and light Maddie shined on the world, what stands out the most in your life still, and do you have dark days? Yes, I have dark days. That was easier to answer. Mm -hmm. What stands out most is how Maddie was compassionate. Right? Maddie had many, many mm -hmm. virtues. He was a good person through and through. Not perfect. Mm -hmm. He made mistakes, but he was quick to apologize and then change that behavior. But Maddie, as he watched children die and families suffer in the ICU, he would write poems for them. He would talk to the doctors and nurses. His heart was always about the next person and the next moment. And Maddie's compassion, and that was evident when he was 14 months old, 13 months old, and a little girl lost her ball at a church event. He was 13 months old. He ran and got her ball and brought it back to her and comforted her and dried her tears and patted her on the head. She was two. He was 13 months old. He just was empathic and, and passionate and compassionate. Hmm. No, he's beautiful. What an example to, to all of us. Uh, Joyce is on the phone from New Jersey. Joyce, what's your question? I, yes, I, I don't have a question, but really a comment. Few comments. I just finished reading the book uh, mm -hmm. maybe about a week or two ago, 
I loved the book too much. I bought about four or five copies of Friends. <laughs> I used an article in New Jersey when I was the director of religious ed uh, four years ago. I used it uh, with our confirmation candidates. It was an article on the life of Maddie. Oh, but I just, wow. it had such an impact on me. And when I heard you talk about the book, when I heard Maddie's mom talk about the book, I had to get it. And it had such an impact on my own personal life. I right now am handicapped myself. I have a very bad back. I have difficulty walking, walk with a cane. Okay. And I keep saying to myself, and Maddie's motivating me to use it or lose it. I'm, I do <laughs> the Skype for surgery. Uh, on the 22nd, I was supposed to have it last month. Okay, Joyce, we're running and, out of time, uh, honey. I, but, I got it. <laughs> but, but I, I love the message. His life is amazing. Thank you, Joyce. No, yeah, I agree. You, and I, I love the idea that he's inspiring her to use it or lose it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I like that. Very yeah. good. No, that's, that's fun. And, you know, we get, we've gotten so many emails. I can't get to all of them. Uh, uh, talking about what an exemplar Maddie is and his life is to young people. Yes. And, uh, and, and you, you know, you certainly see that. There, th this is another question. And I I wanted to get into this with you anyway. This comes from Mark, and he writes, I absolutely love the book. I think Maddie was a great role model, uh, particularly to young people. What do you think Maddie would say about the issue with MDA and Jerry Lewis? Now, we should tell you, for those of you who don't know, Jerry Lewis, for the first time in 45 years, will not host the MDA telethon, the Jerry Lewis telethon. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, you're a national vice president of MDA. Mm -hmm. You host the local edition here yes. in Washington. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Well, you left one thing out. I'm also a personal friend of Jerry Lewis and mm -hmm. his family. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Maddie would be wise enough to say I need all the facts before mm -hmm. I could make a public opinion or share a pub uh, uh, an opinion. I mean, right now, what we know for sure is that Jerry Lewis will not be hosting the telethon this year. We don't have a statement from Jerry. No. We don't have a statement from the MDA president. What we do have is facts on what MDA does for families like mine. Mm -hmm. And I struggled with this because I am going to co-host the D.C. telethon. Yeah. For and six hours for six instead hours. of 21. Right. And you know, change is difficult. Yeah. Nobody likes change, but sometimes change is necessary. And change mm -hmm. comes about because of technology, because of interest, because of lack of interest. There's many reasons. Some people are going to embrace the change. Some people are going to fight it. Bottom line is, I have to look and say, I'm an MDA national vice president. I'm Jerry's friend. I'm Maddie's mom. What is MDA to me? And MDA is hope. And if I get out there and start talking about my opinion, if I start saying, I think they should have this, or I think they did this right, or they did this wrong, mm -hmm. I'm taking energy away from, from raising money the from the cause. They yeah. And they do phenomenal work. Yeah. And you know what? Regardless of why this is happening, and I honestly have not spoken with Jerry Lewis or Jerry Weinberg about this personally. So what I'm hearing is all second, third, fourth hand also. Therefore, I have to go back to what matters. And what matters is my choice, and my choice is to do what's right. Mm -hmm. I will support Telethon, and I will miss Jerry Lewis tremendously. Now, I will miss him terribly, and my yes, family absolutely. will. And we all will. Uh, after 45 years, $2 billion raised. Yes. What I loved about him, his manic energy, the, 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 you know, some people, oh, he was this, he was that. The energy, yeah. I can't think of anyone in that community who's done more for disabled people and particularly right. those with muscular dystrophy than And I bet he Jerry watches Lewis. all six hours on Sunday because this is his telethon. Well, I will, I will certainly miss him. Yeah. We, it was must-see TV at our household. Yes. but it still um, should be must-see TV. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Let's go to Maria from New Jersey. Go ahead, Maria, what's your question? Uh, hi, I just, wanted, I just wanted to say that um, I also lost a child and I envy your faith because I want that hope that I'll see my child again. Do you have that hope? And where did you get your faith from? Good question. I, it's an excellent question. I definitely have that hope. And I, and I believe with 100% of my spirit, my mind, my body, my heart, that Jesus died for my sins, that heaven is real, that heaven's a wonderful place, and that my four children are waiting there with open arms for me, that I will see them again. Um, I do believe that. I'm in agony waiting for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
but I do believe that. I have to believe that. I mean, what is the option? I mean, there is no option. I want to share something with, with uh, the viewers. Uh, this is a little clip. You were on, incidentally, Oprah Winfrey's last in-studio yes. show. You were her la one of her last guests. Yes. There were only two of you on the show. Um, she reserved that because these were her favorite guests and, and her most important. Maddie had such an influence on her life, and she, she obviously gave him a platform to bring his message yes. to the world. Mm -hmm. I want to show people this clip because it gives you an insight into Maddie's faith at a very young age. Listen to this, and then there's a little clip of Jenny with Oprah. When I die, I want to be a child in heaven. I want to be a 10-year-old cherub. I want to be a hero in heaven and a peacemaker, just like my goal on earth. I will ask God if I can help the people in purgatory. I will help them think about their life, about their spirits, about their future. I will help them hear their heart songs again so they can finally see the face of God so soon. When I die, I want to be just like I want to be here on earth. That's a poem from poet and peacemaker Maddie Stepanek, who will always be one of the brightest lights to ever grace our stage and the planet. It's hard to believe he's been gone now for almost seven years. He would have been 21 this year. And I'm here with Maddie's mother, Jenny. I'm sure you still feel, and, and Micah, we must say, mm -hmm. and the dog, Micah. Uh, you still feel his spirit? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I love feeling his spirit. Mm -hmm. I love celebrating his spirit every day. That quote at the top is really, that, that I was watching you as that was going on, and it's, I mean, it gives you chills. Mm -hmm. Hearing a child talk in those terms about, I want to be in heaven, I want to, I'm, mm -hmm. I want to go to purgatory and help people recognize yes. their meaning in right. life. Yeah, he, he believed he was a messenger on earth and a messenger in heaven as well, that, that, that you could choose. You know, you can go to heaven and choose to sit with God, or you could go to heaven and choose to continue your goals on earth. And he prayed every day that when he died, God still had a plan for him and that mm -hmm. that plan was to bring hope and peace to people in need. Does that give you comfort hearing that again, hearing those words? Oh, yes. Every I mean, that mother I who called him. earlier, yes. you know, she wants, she wants that confidence. Yes. She wants to know that she'll see yes. her child again. And it's hard because some people look at me and they say, yes, but you lost Maddie. Maddie is remembered because the greatest fear that a parent has mm is A, that they won't see their child again, mm -hmm. and B, that their child will be forgotten, that they are the keeper of the sacred memory of that mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And I have Maddie. The world remembers Maddie, and they remember mm -hmm. him favorably. Yeah. I also have Katie. I also mm -hmm. have Stevie. I also have Jamie. I know the pain of the unknown child. I, I know that as well. And I still find hope. I still find hope. I still believe that I will see my children again and that they're in a good place. Um, but I believe this is a good place. I mean, they say your children are in a better place. Mm -hmm. We can make this a better place too, but we're all gonna go to that better place sometime. Some people are looking in and they're saying, but look at the suffering you've gone through. Yes. In your own body still, right. the loss of all your children. Mm -hmm. And they say, why would a God who loves allow that kind of suffering in one woman's life? You say what? Because we're not puppets. <laughs> um, God didn't cause my suffering. God does allow suffering, but I think God looks at my suffering right now, and it's immense to me, but this is a blink of an eye to God, all right? Heaven is eternity. It's billions of years, and I think God cries with me when I'm suffering, you know, even the silence of God. God's there mm -hmm. in my suffering. God doesn't abandon me. So when God looks, he hurts also, but God did not say, she's strong enough, I'm gonna give her this disability. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give her four dead children and this one one and that one two. It happens. We do not choose it, God did not choose it. The choice comes in what we do with it. What do we do with the ashes from 9-11, 2001? What do we do with the loss of that big, treasured baby in New Jersey? What do we do with my children? What mm -hmm. do we do with any moment? That's our opportunity. And that's where God is, is right in that moment. Maddie inspired me to believe that each of us can make a difference in this world, including me. I live directly across from the Maddie J.T. Stepanek Park. I look out over the park 
And it's wonderful because instead of looking back on Maddie's life, I'm looking forward on all the great things that are growing. I see children playing. I see people sitting in the Peace Garden, playing chess. I see everything that Maddie believed in. The park is 26 acres and has dog parks, a playground, and at the heart of the park is Maddie's Peace Garden. There are times that I feel the weight of an empty lap and empty arms from burying children, but I don't get stuck in that. I'm not a woman to be pitied. I thank God every morning when I wake up that I have another day and I know there will be burdens balanced in with the blessings throughout the day. That's okay, I'll balance them. I love being next to the statue and touching it. This is not my son. This is not even where my son's spirit is. My son's spirit is in me. It's in any person that lives or breathes his message. Tell me about this uh, peace celebration that yes, you're, you're hosting. And that really mm -hmm. is um, a living, tangible mm -hmm. yes. memorial, if you will, yes. to Maddie. You have yeah. the park where this is mm -hmm. taking place, which was in his honor. Yes. You have a statue of Maddie and even Mika mm -hmm. uh, there in the park. Um, what do you hope people will take away? And tell me about the, this Peace Flags uh, uh, exhibit. Well, I hope what people take away is they walk away saying, I am peace. Right now, people are saying, Maddie's a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Maddie's inspirational. I want people to come, and one of the things I want them to do is pose for a photo in groups or individuals with Maddie's statue, knowing I am peace, we are peace because I want them to leave knowing that they can be the same inspiration Maddie was if mm -hmm. they make that their choice. Mm -hmm. And the other part of your question, you know, the, the living, the tangible, mm -hmm. I mean, I hope people come and have fun. Mm -hmm. I hope that they celebrate and, and the peace flags. Play after every storm, right? There's actually a station. Remember to play after every storm is mm -hmm. one of our stations. That was his personal um, philosophy, Maddie's personal philosophy. Well, we've taken the translations that we have so far, which is about 50 translations of Maddie's 9-11 poem, For Our World, they're available on the website, so people around the world can see these, download them, they're free. Download mm -hmm. it, post it, use it, share it, do what you want with it. Maddie gave it to us, I'm giving it to people. We're gonna have in the flag, uh, in, the, in the park, flags with this poem and all these mm -hmm. translations. Every other one will be English. People will have an opportunity to hear Maddie. We're gonna play an audio recording of Maddie reading the poem. We have a, a little girl who's gonna read it in Chinese. We have it in American Sign Language. I want people to understand we are a mosaic of gifts. We must rebuild the mosaic. That is our choice. Mm -hmm. And in a moment, we're going to play you just a few little bites from Maddie uh, on our way out. But they, they kind of encapsulate God's calling, what he calls us to, and the use of our gifts. Before we go, we've been getting tons of emails, um, some of it coming as a result of the Oprah show. She mentioned that there was a cause for sainthood underway, which is a little inaccurate. The, the, the fact is there is a guild that has been founded yes. to advance his cause, right. but this is a long process. Right. And in the name of full disclosure, I was asked to join the guild as I was asked to join the Fulton Sheen Guild years ago. Mm -hmm. I happily and consider it an honor to be a member of both. Um, but the, mm -hmm. the, the Maddie Stepanek uh, cause is just starting up, and uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure there'll be more information in the coming days, and we'll share that with you as it comes right. about. But it's to look at the virtues of his life, and you sort of collect mm -hmm. information, and that's ongoing. Right, and I think when Oprah asked, because she's not Catholic, no, she's so she not. doesn't understand, right. so I explained it's a committee, a guild, right. and the first step is to investigate Maddie's life mm -hmm. and then move forward, and I thank you for choosing to be a part of that. You could say yeah. no, but you choose to use your platform well, to help spread a good message. Well, so I would you. look, I, 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 I was asked by those other than you, because you're not a part of the guild, which I, I was kind of disappointed that you weren't a part of the guild. I'm Maddie's mom, I'm not a part of the guild. I understand why you wouldn't be, but right. it is a, uh, no, it's, it, 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 he's an incredible little boy, and the deeper you go into his, what he said, and just as importantly, what he lived, uh, I, I think the message is, uh, comes yes. across loud and clear, and, and he is inspirational to, to no end. Jenny Stepanek, thank, thank you. you for being here, thank as you. always. For more on Maddie Stepanek and his amazing life, as well as information on the Maddie, Maddie J.T. Stepanek Foundation, visit MaddieOnline.com. You can also find Jenny's New York Times bestselling book, Messenger, The Legacy of Maddie J.T. Stepanek and Heart Songs at bookstores everywhere. We leave you with some reflections from Maddie Stepanek. God gives me hope that there is something greater than us, something better and bigger than the here and now that can help us live.
I feel that God has given me a very special opportunity that I should not let go to waste. I use the gift he has given me. That is all the time we have next week. We'll be coming to you from our new studio in Washington, D.C. You won't want to miss that. And in the meantime, you can follow me at RaymondArroyo.com. Go to the left-hand side. The Twitter and Facebook links are there. We always provide commentary and news as it happens. We'll be looking for you. In the meantime, we'll be scouting the world over for all that is seen and unseen. On behalf of the staff and crew of EWTN News, I'm Raymond Arroyo from New York City. We'll see you next time. Bye now.